Hey everybody, I'm Rick Yaddos. Today's Everything Music. I'm gonna do something a little different. We're gonna talk about five things every beginner guitarist need to learn. Now, I don't usually do videos like this. The reason that I'm doing this today is because my kids can't take lessons now because we're stuck at home. So I decided I'm gonna teach my two daughters how to play the guitar. Now I've taught a lot of beginner guitar lessons before. I'm gonna teach them things right from the beginning that they're gonna eventually need to know. And it's better if you teach beginner guitarists this right off the bat. Now I've taught many beginner guitar lessons before. I taught guitar here in Atlanta from 1994 to 1999. I had 50 students a week and many of them were beginner guitarists. So I am very well versed at teaching beginning guitar. Okay, the first one I wanna talk about is the basic strumming pattern. This is really the basis of all rhythm guitar playing and, and it will help your rhythm just in general if you can learn this simple pattern. We're gonna do it with an E minor chord here in open position. All of the things I'm gonna talk about today are gonna to involve open position chords, okay? So I'm gonna use an E minor chord right here. Now, the strumming pattern is this. Down, down, up, up, down, up down, up, up, down, up. What this does is gets your hand moving in an up, down pattern and you play down strokes on down beats and up strokes on up beats. And it's gonna be the basis for alternate picking for all the scales that you're gonna learn later on. And it's gonna improve your rhythm, but it's not an easy pattern for beginners to get. So your hand has to never stop moving like this. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. You notice my hand never stops moving like this. Down, down, up, up, down. Number two, when you're learning your basic chords, learn your G chord with the third finger on the B string. I'll tell you why. You'll see in a lot of books that the G major chord is taught like this. With the open B string, the pinky on the high E string. I don't like that. One of the reasons is that if you go from C to G, it's actually pretty easy to play that chord voicing. The problem is that when you go from G to D, you have to completely lift your hand up, all the fingers, and replace them on the D chord, which typically beginners find very difficult. The third finger, if you play it that note D there in the G chord, and you go to a D chord, you use that as your anchor point to play D. So watch my hand. That's a good thing to practice right there, to learn how to change chords without lifting fingers that are common between the chords. G, D, C add nine, G. That chord progression is in a million songs. And C add nine is really a substitute chord for C major. Now, if you wanna learn every song on the radio, if you add an E minor chord, but keep these two fingers here and put your two fingers where they would go on an E minor chord. You can pretty much play any song on the radio. Those four chords, four, one, six, five, you can pretty much put them in any order and you get any song that you've heard over the last 15 years that's pop or country. If you put a capo on, you can really play with any song on the radio because it changes the key. Same shapes. And I'm doing my same strumming pattern. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down. Number three is muting the low E string. Many chords like D, see my thumb here? My thumb is going over the top. A lot of guitar methods will tell you to have your thumb behind the neck. This is the proper position for muting the low E string. Thumb around the neck and block that. So I'm muting that string. If I don't mute that and I have my thumb back here and I hit that low E string by accident, the chord sounds really bad because it's not even the right chord. That note E is not in that D chord. Correct or incorrect. You may as well learn your D major chord right off the bat, muting the low E string. Same with A major. Even though A major does have that note in it, the low E, it sounds bad. So 
So right there, those three things are incredibly important and you should learn right from the start. When I teach my girls how to play guitar today, the first thing I'm gonna do after I teach them E minor and the strumming pattern, probably I'll teach them tomorrow how to mute that low string. You need a smaller guitar to do that uh, for, a, for a child, but my daughter Lennon can do it on this guitar, definitely. So that's number three. Number four is changing chords seamlessly. So this is a trick that I would always show my beginner guitar students. It's playing your last upstroke with no hands on the strings, okay? So let's say I'm going from C, G to D, okay? So each of these chords, now the D, has that one note that is common between them, but from C to G, even if you play C, G like that, but I like, because it sounds better. So I'm gonna play. That last upstroke in the pattern, you lift your hand up, you play the open strings, and that gives you enough time, once you practice it for a few days, to, to change chords, right? So I'm going down, down, up, up, down, up, change. That little thing there, you don't even notice it, right, that I'm playing all the strings open. I did it again. Up, down, up, change, right? That will improve your guitar playing and enable you to play songs in rhythm and change chords quicker. And I would simply just... I practice that a hundred times until you get it. Number five is a simple flat picking exercise that I would always teach my beginning guitar students. The reason I teach this is once again to practice alternate picking. So this will eventually come into play when you're playing scales, any type of lead guitar playing, you're gonna have to know how to skip strings and isolate the particular single strings with your pick without hitting the wrong one. So I usually will start with a D chord and I will play this pattern. D string, B string, G string, E string. So that's the pattern. So I'm going down, up, down, up. That's the pattern. If I go to a C add nine chord, I use the same pattern, but I just start with the fifth string on this note C. You notice what I did there when I changed from D to C add nine. I added that note to give me time. It's the same thing as I did using the open strings. I ch added that note to make the transition sound smooth. Now I go to the G chord, I'm doing the same pattern, except I'm playing the low G and then I'm going way down to the B string. And what that does is it gives you a feel for where the strings are. This particular flat picking exercise will help you play and isolate strings properly. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a first time viewer, don't forget to ring the bell. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. You can find it there. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. Check out the new Beato Ear Training course that I have. If you go to beatoeartraining.com, watch the introduction video. That's how you get, that's how you develop a great ear so you can figure out songs by ear. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching and stay safe.